Okay, so the next thing we want to do is geo-reference our field map, so it'll be easier to just trace over everything. But remember, the field map was in the field, so it has no geographic coordinates uh, in a digital sense. So we have this toolbar already that's the geo-referencing toolbar, but if you don't see that toolbar, go to Customize Toolbars Geo-referencing. So see, I got rid of it. Toolbars, so I can make it come back. So we want that. All right, so the next thing then is make sure that you have your already your map in the your working folder and we're going to just add it. So click on the yellow plus here. What we may have to do is connect to the folder. So if we connect to folder, we'll go, that's why it's nice if you have your working folder on the desktop, it's easy to find. So we just click like that and say OK. And now uh, R can find the data that we're looking for. So uh, you, don't, you shouldn't have to do this every time. So we just say Add. And it says, do we want to make pyramids? You can say yes. Just makes it uh, draw better. Now you get an error here that says unknown spatial reference, which is the whole point. We're going to geo-reference this. So say OK. Now if you look, you might say, oh, where is it? Well, it doesn't know where to draw it. So let's zoom out just a little bit. So come over here and say fix zoom out. Now we'll go over to the georeferencing toolbar and this is very important is whatever is in this little window is what you're going to georeference. So you don't want to georeference the reference which is the DRG. You want to georeference your map file. So this is super important. If you forget you'll end up moving the DRG and you have to start over. So please make sure you get the right file. Now once you have that highlighted, now you can say fit to display. So there it is. So you can see it's not quite the right scale and it's not in the right place. But it's going to be pretty easy for us to um, put it in the right place with just a few points of connection. So what you want to do is, is basically kind of toggle back and forth what you display and what you don't. And then look for critical um, common points. So let's start off with something easy. And you want to always go from the unknown to the known. So in other words, if I click here on this add control points, I'm going to say, all right, well, this little corner of the map polygon for on the unknown is the same as that one there. Boom. And so you see it automatically translates the map. So let's do another one. I can do this little corner down here from the unknown to the known, boom. And look at that, it's already pretty close. Now the map outline might not be, have been traced exactly right, so let's, let's toggle here and let's find, what I like to do is, even if they're, all, they're kind of perfect, let's just add a few more. So like right here, the bend of this river, the center point of it, I turn off the unknown and then I'll just click then right on the same location in the known. Okay, I've got three. So it's important we want to have a distribution of these control points. Let's pick another one. Something down in the lower left I think would be good. One I see is this little a contour sort of V here. Let's do that one. Go see how it's not exactly in the right place, click there. So now once we have four points, we're, it's almost good enough. A few people's maps are a little bit distorted from when I scanned it, so you may need to add a few more. Uh, let's try, like, uh, let's say this bend over here in the river right there. Turn off and put it there. So you can think of this as kind of like sewing these two together, so we want to um, kind of keep tacking the our map from the field to the known reference. And notice here the it's okay if the map outline isn't perfect. What we care about is the position of the, the contours. So as I keep toggling I see that I'm not perfect on I'm looking not at the map outline but actually the contour so and the channel center line. So let's add another point over here in Doom. Somewhere right in here. Just move it to the center there. 
won't be perfect because they're two different contour sets, but they're not too different. Let's do one down um, towards the mine. It's one right around here below thumbs up. We can add. Okay, so you can see I have about seven. You can keep going, but um, in many cases, you shouldn't need more than four or a few more. So once you're done, then go to georeferencing, and we want to do rep by. It's going to make this a two meter cell size. Nearest neighbor's fine. One important thing is to go ahead and click the output location and kind of specify that you want it to be in that folder, even if it was there already because we want to make sure that the the name we can edit and it has a tiff so it changes to rectify and then this is format tiff and now say save so if you go to your to that folder you'll see you have um, two sets of um, files here so you have the original tiff that we had scanned that was on georeferenced and then the rectified TIFF. And these other files are helper files that help ARC know where to put that map. So then what you can do is go back to ARC and you can add the rectified file. And it looks good, but then go ahead and right click and remove the original. And so it got rid of all the tie points. But this way, uh, the, ref the, geo ref the rectified file is permanently put in the right place. Don't be alarmed about the mismatch on the map boundary. What matters is that the contours are and the mappings in the right place.